Hello everyone, Steve here from Tech Toy Tinker and Retro Arena. I wanted to do another video today to show you guys some of the Android games that can be played on this current build. As well, I'm going to show you some useful applications in a couple N64 and Dreamcast games. But as you can see here, these are all games that I've tested and confirmed are working so far. And there's a lot of them. There's a lot more I haven't tried yet as well. First things first, to get these games, because there's no Play Store on here, the easiest method is to just use Google Play on your phone. Get your game, buy it if you have to, download the game, install it, and then use APK Extractor, which is another application, and you get your APK file that way. And then you go into Android Data OBB, and you get your OBB and data files, and then you copy those over to this and then it generally works. The occasional game will give you a pop-up about a Google license or not being able to find play services, I should say. Um, just press OK, usually it keeps going. There's the odd time that it doesn't, but for the most part it will just keep going. A lot of these games work with controller support out of the box too. There are apps you can use to map though, if not. These games also allow you to invert the controller to temporarily sidestep the joystick issue. It has been patched, so it's not a current issue moving forward, but if you have an early build that it's got a problem with, you can invert it. to give you guys an idea here. The gameplay is good, too. It's not running poorly. I don't notice huge lag spikes or issues. Oh, guess this video's got to get marked not for kids now. I mean, generally speaking, you get the idea. There's some games that I just found out that they worked today, and I was pleasantly surprised. An example of that would be Another Eden. Now, for those of you that are RPG fans, more specifically people that are fans of games like Final Fantasy VII, Chrono Trigger, this has the same designer, and also the same person did the uh, music score. The game looks nice, the music is nice, it's well designed, well thought out. It takes a minute to load apparently, but... As you can tell right here, you get very Final Fantasy type vibes from it. And it's intentional because it's the same person that made it. See how nice the graphics are? Very nice looking game. Obviously, all the other Grand Theft Autos work just as well as GTA 3. This is no point to me necessarily going and showing you guys all that. But this, I know some people are going to be asking me about this. You'll see why right away. Now this game hasn't worked on pretty much any handheld except for the extremely high powered ones previously. The reason is because it's um, 
made for x86. It's it's not made for ARM, and so. So there's Killer Instinct. The Room is a really good game as well. Secret of Mana. Square Enix has released a lot of mobile ports of their games over the last decade. And a lot of them are good. And the ones that I've tried all work here. This one actually works out of the box with controller as well. So that's a big plus. You get the idea though. There's some really, really good games that you have access to because that this is Android. Ace Attorney, Survival Island, Oddmar, Need for Speed Most Wanted, which looks really good and there's basically no chance of us getting on Linux. I'm going to show you guys this game for a minute, and then I'll move over to a couple of applications I want to talk about. As you can see from the detail here, it looks quite nice. Steering takes some getting used to. As you can see though, it does work, looks nice. Now, the application I wanted to talk to you guys about is called Kernel Auditor. When you open it, you'll just see some general overview. There's a hidden drop-down menu there because it's white on white. Bad idea. So, here you can control the governor. On demand, changes the scaling as is necessary. Performance is the one that I use a lot of the times when doing gig, that Dreamcast and higher-end stuff. Um, it sets it to the highest, and you can set the minimum frequencies of the clocks. So you could change this to match the maximum, which is 1.8 gigahertz, and then your device will always be running at the maximum speed. The reason why that is helpful to some degree is because sometimes with certain emulators, you'll notice a bit of choppiness or a momentary pause when things switch into higher or lower gear in terms of the clocking speeds. And so this will kind of just smooth that out a bit. It's not a massive performance gain or anything crazy like that. It's just a slight little bump, but anything helps, right? So... In the way of media, I haven't tried Stadia yet. Cody Works, VLC, Netflix, Plex, Moonlight, YouTube Advanced I showed yesterday. Emulators. Scum is awesome, by the way. Uh, I wanted to show... I'm going to do Muppin. Here we go. Moopin, however you want to pronounce it. With N64, you kind of got to play with some settings to set it how you like it. You can have different scaling resolutions and things like that. And obviously, the lesser resolutions will work a little bit better. But I was playing this on, I think it was 640 by 480 and it seemed decent to me. I tried GoldenEye and a couple of other games. Currently, I think it's set to 320 by 240 which is probably unnecessary, and I should fix that before I start a game. Oh, no, there we go. Okay, good enough. It's a game that always lags. That one. It's always choppy at the beginning. Let's see how that goes. I haven't played this one yet either, so we'll find out it together.
Well, it wasn't incredibly laggy and choppy in the intro, so... If you try this game on the RK3326, you'll notice a lot of intro and intro noise and lag, crackling, choppiness. And in-game won't go so great either, either, I should say. For obvious reasons, I'm not going to sit here and play the entire game intro and get myself into trouble like that, but you get the point, I believe. Another showcase I wanted to do here is Crazy Taxi 2, because I know that on almost every, well, virtually every RK3326 device, it works, but you always get that bit of slowdown or crackle when you're approaching a lot of vehicles or a lot of stuff's going on around you on the screen. And so I kind of want to show the difference with that, because it's a pretty substantial improvement in my opinion. I also, for the record, I do plan to support this with Retro Arena and Slash TV. I'm not only doing Android. I'm just waiting for, it's crazy, taxi waiting for the source code to be given to me before I can start doing Linux. I'm not going to pick nobody up, I'm just going to drive around for a minute. Notice how you're not hearing crackling audio? Pretty big improvement. There's virtually no slowdown, I haven't heard any crackling in the audio. So, that's a pretty big improvement over the predecessor device because there's no lag anymore. It doesn't matter how you slice it, that's a dramatic improvement. I didn't set up a location. My fault. Apparently I don't have any Saturn games on here right now. It's because I had them on a, a USB stick. I'll have to do that in the next video. But Saturn also works a lot better than it did previously as well. Most things you can still run fine through RetroArch as well. I don't have a preference between the 64 and 32-bit. I don't really find that one works better than the other. But a lot of things here do work. Even Nintendo DS works in here. It can be a little bit choppy, but it does work. N64 works also, but I advise to use the standalone just because it does work better. All this other good stuff works fine. You see, that's the latest version of RetroArch as well. So, that's going to about do it for this video. This build is still very much in progress and in development. I will keep you guys posted as more things happen, and I'll also be sure to do a video on Linux when I get it ready as well. I opted not to do the video on the image it ships with because, number one, it's not mine. I don't make Botocera. They have their own people, and they do their own stuff. And number two, because there's, there's a couple of issues with it, which is pretty standard. There's, there was issues with every stock OS for almost every handheld I've ever worked on. So, in my opinion, it's not surprising or necessarily bad that it's going to come down to the community to make a, a more robust image. That's pretty much the way that it's always been. I don't know why it's suddenly become a talked-about issue now, but it's 
never changed, even as far back as the Odroid Go Advance. If you think about the stock image, it only has 20 systems on it, right? You need Arc OS, you need Retro Arena. Those, that's how you get 100 systems. That's how you get the more robust themes, the over-the-air updater. That's how you get all of those things, and it's always been that way. This is not a surprise. But as I said, that's going to do it for this video. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys again in another day or two. Take care.